In the previous lecture, we were able to use Ampere's law to derive an equation for the magnetic field inside a toroid. So recall a toroid is essentially a solenoid that we have bent into the shape of a circle as shown in the following diagram. So this is our toroid in which we have an electric current I that is traveling through our loops of wire. Now let's suppose the number of loops in this this particular toroid is given by uppercase N. If the electric current is I, then the magnetic field B is given by the following equation where R is simply the distance from the center of our toroid to the region at which we're examining the magnetic field B inside our toroid. So the magnitude of our magnetic field B is equal to the product of the permeability of free space given by mu naught and the number of loops of wire I, the electric current inside those wires, divided by 2 pi R, where R is this chosen region. Now, what about the magnetic field outside our toroid? So we're examining our magnetic field B either in this region or outside of our toroid. So, what is the magnetic field B as a result of the moving electric current inside the wires of the toroid? outside of this region of our toroid. So, let's once again apply Ampere's law to determine what our magnitude of magnetic field B is either in this region of space or in this region of space. So, once again, we need to apply Ampere's law. So, to apply Ampere's law, we need to choose a path of integration. So, we choose our path to be a closed circular loop that lies outside our toroid as shown in the following diagram. So this is our chosen path of integration. Now the radius of this particular circular path, let's suppose, is given by R. Notice we could have also chosen our path to lie inside this region. The result would be exactly the same. So, by Ampere's law, we know that the closed integral around this pathway of the dot product of our magnetic field and our infinitely small region DL is equal to mu naught, our permeability of free space, multiplied by our enclosed electric current. So, let's begin by asking the following question. What exactly is the net electric current that is enclosed by our pathway that we chose? So, let's examine the following cross-section of the following toroid. So, we essentially slice our toroid, so we only see the following regions of wire. So notice, on the outside region, we have our electric current that is coming out of the page, as shown by the following dots inside our sections of wire. However, in this section, on the inner edge of our toroid, we have the same quantity of electric current that is going into the page, as described by the following axis. So on the outside, we have n number of loops, and on the inside, we have the same number of loops given by uppercase n. So, the pathway that we chose around our toroid encloses n loops of wire that carry electric current in one direction and n number of loops of wire that carry current in the opposite direction. So we have n number of loops carrying current outside of the page and n number of loops of wire that carry current into the page. So that basically means the net electric current that is enclosed by this entire region is simply zero. So we see that if we take the closed integral of the dot product of BD out, that is equal to zero because our enclosed current is zero. And that implies that this is zero when our B is zero. So that implies that in the region outside of our toroid, our B is equal to zero. 
Now, the same exact result can be determined if we choose our path of integration to lie in this region. Any region inside the following toroid, inside this space, will enclose an electric current of zero, and so that implies that our magnetic field inside this region will also be zero. So we only have a magnetic field inside our toroid.